Hello and welcome to another episode of WVU Energy Express on West Virginia Public Broadcasting and YouTube. I'm your host, Zach Harold. Well, unfortunately, summer is winding down, and that means a lot of our friends are coming back from their vacations. But Rosemary still has two stops left on her cryptid road trip. You guys want to go check it out? Let's go. Hi there, I'm Rosemary Hathaway. I'm a professor of English here at West Virginia University, and I teach folklore classes. And welcome to the West Virginia Cryptid Road Trip. And how this is gonna work is we're gonna travel all around West Virginia and visit all the cryptids that you've probably already heard about, but find out more about them and see which ones are in your backyard. What about Bat Boy? There's a real question about Bat Boy, whether he's actually a cryptid or whether he was just a marketing ploy. Bat Boy is the only one of our cryptids that we can decidedly say was invented by outsiders. Bat Boy was created by the editors of the supermarket tabloid newspaper, The Weekly World News, in the 1990s. Bat Boy was alleged to be a kid who fell down the Laurel Caverns while on a family trip in the early 1950s and then emerged 30 years later with all sorts of bat-like characteristics like pointy ears and fangs. Whether Bat Boy is real or not, it's up for grabs. But, you know, we claim him anyway. We're gonna stop and talk to somebody from WV Extension about Bat Boy. Growing up, this was one of my favorite places to play. It's in an old community here in Clay County, West Virginia. The residents even chiseled out a hole in the rock where they could gather water. The day's gone by the history that's here, but probably the most intriguing thing about this place for me as a boy was the hole that went back underneath the rock. How far does it go? I'm not sure. We never really had the nerve to go. There could be spiders underneath there, or snakes, or even bats. Some of that curiosity as a kid was probably fueled by a tabloid that was on the newspaper stands at the time. I remember standing in the grocery store line with my parents, and it was called the World Weekly News. It was 1992, and this creature that was half bat, half human, was discovered here somewhere in West Virginia. Maybe Greenbrier, Pocahontas County, maybe right here in Clay. Now, you have to understand that a tabloid, eh, you know, it has some questionable news in it. And what do you believe? I believe I've never been all the way underneath this rock, so I think it's possible that Fat Boy could exist. Fat Boy became so popular that he was the second highest rating cover story in World Weekly News history. Fat Boy became so popular that there was even comic strip created in World Weekly News where Bat Boy did some amazing things which were obviously not true. For instance, he ran for president, uh, he may have met Elvis, and he was also on a road trip with an American family hitchhiking around the United States. It leads you to, to think, and it makes you wonder just exactly what is underneath the rocks here in West Virginia. But do you recall the most famous cryptid of all? Mothman! Mothman was first sighted in Point Pleasant, West Virginia in 1967, shortly before the collapse of the Silver Bridge that connected West Virginia with Ohio. He's definitely the most famous of all of our West Virginia cryptids, having been the subject of a book and a movie. He's also the one that is sighted outside of West Virginia. He's been seen in Europe, Chicago, He's, he's, an inter, he's our international cryptid. And now we're gonna pass it over to our friend at WVU Extension in Point Pleasant, who's gonna take us to the site of the Mothman legend. Hello everyone, I am August and I am a member of the Wild Owens and today we will be looking for the Mothman in the wilds of Mason County, West Virginia. 
In late 1966, Mothman made his debut as a cryptid by following closely a bunch of teenagers who were out driving their car in the backwoods outside of Point Pleasant in Mason County, West Virginia. Ever since then, there have been a plethora of sightings of Mothman from as far as Chicago and Great Britain. Each one of those stories has the same description though, a tall, imposing figure with the hugest wingspan the people had ever seen and glowing red eyes. Now, Mothman is also considered a bad omen. Bef you see, before the collapse of the Silver Bridge in Point Pleasant, he was seen. And before a variety of UFO sightings in Point Pleasant, he was also seen. So people c connected the two and said he was the reason they happened. Now, we are going further and further into the woods trying to find Mothman while being surrounded by mods and hearing fireworks. Did you guys know that Mothman got his name based on his similar appearance to Batman? Isn't that so cool? Let's go find out some more. Now, we're still looking for Mothman, but did you know that he is supposedly born in the TNT area of Mason County, which used to house explosives and radioactive weapons from World War II? He is also supposedly from a curse from a long, long ago battle and happens to live in the TNT area where he's most often spotted. Now, Mothman is super popular in the world of cryptids. In fact, he's so popular that Hollywood even made a movie about the prophecies he gave people who have spotted him. Nevertheless, Mothman is a West Virginian icon, and as a teenager myself, just like the teenager who spied him in the first place, and as a proud owner of Mothman Crocs, I would be ashamed to not go and try and find him. Wait, did you guys hear that? Yo, no. do you guys see that? I think it's Mothman! Hi Mothman! What a cool guy. Let's just hope that he isn't a bad omen. Thanks for coming along anyway though. Now we visited our friends Mike and Bruce at their campsite several times this summer. They're about ready to pack up and go home, but they have a final few tips to share with us. Let's go see what they have to tell us today. You know, Bruce, on more formal sites, you may find in a campground that there are tent pads and they're designed to be a place to put tents so we don't wear the ground. Yeah. You should really use those, but in this case we don't. And so you want to use a place that's probably already been a tent site before, right? Something that's firm, but I don't know, you, you have better keen eye on this than I do. What else should we be looking for whenever we want to set a tent? Well, I, I, I like a spot that's if not level, nearly level. I don't want to be sliding down the hill all night or things like that, you know. And so I like a, I like a site to levels I can get it. And if uh, obviously not a lot of rocks underneath, even if I have a pad, if you like to have uh, this uh, ground and so on uh, with some leaf cover without a bunch of rocks, would be helpful. I don't want to be in a hole if in case it rains and get you know just water. fill up, <laughs> yeah, yeah, fill up, fill up with water, or in, in obviously in a even a dry stream bed because if it rains overnight and you're in that in that dry stream bed, then you have water coming down into your tent. So that's common sense, but it's something we want to look for. And then yeah, I see you looking up. What are we thinking about there? Well, I like this site. I mean, yeah. I think I can sleep here. Level. And I'm a little concerned about that limb right there, falling in the middle of the night, yeah. or that limb. Oh my gosh, there's an entire dead tree. A dead tree up there, which has a, a couple live trees around that may not get here, but do you want to take the chance of it may not get here? So basically the bottom line is you do want to look around to the trees around your site and see if there's anything that could be dangerous because if you have wind in the night, any kind of storm, something going to blow on you. You don't want to get uh, crushed in a tent. I, I like the drainage. I like the fact that it's fairly level, but I'm not, I'm not satisfied with the trees that are here. Um, I just don't, I don't want to sleep underneath those. Agreed. Let's well, look for another site. I agree. Well, Mike, I kind of like the looks of this site. It's pretty level. There's not a lot of trees and rocks in the way. What do you think? I don't see anything up, up, up there that's going to fall on us, do you? No, I don't. And it's not got any drainage issues, so Bruce, I say let's use it. Yeah, let's do it.
like we got the tent set up. We've got a place established for our bear bag. We're kind of ready for the night. We said we'd go back to the fire and maybe grab a bite and play some cards. Marshmallows? That'll work. I'm in. Well, we got the tent set up and the fire still going, looking good. Now where we're going to put the bear bag. Yep. You know, Mike, when you, it's a lot of fun to go out hiking and camping, and it's something I'd really encourage people to do, but we always need to encourage people to practice these no trace ethics when they're out there camping. And those are the things we've talked about today. And let's just kind of review those things. The first one is plan and prepare. So plan your trip, prepare for it, make sure you're prepared for the weather, all the different things that come about, make sure that you have adequate food, water, all those things as part of the planning. And then two, you need to make sure to stay on durable surfaces and you need to stay in the trail, don't cut corners, and you need to make sure to set your tent in an appropriate place. Right. So minimize your impacts. Right. And, and a lot, as far as minimizing impacts, the third one would be minimizing the impact of a fire. So we're talking about gathering the firewood where you build your fire, make sure your fire doesn't get away. All those things that have to do with anything you do with the fire. Well, let's not forget too that when we come here, we're in wildlife's backyard. And so um, we need to make sure to respect the wildlife and make sure not to disturb their, their ecosystems as, as little as possible. I think that really goes hand in hand with their trace ethics. And then two, to, to not make those conflicts of interest by leaving things around that they would be enticed to. Right. And the fifth one would be uh, taking care of your waste. That could be your food wrappers, that could be your own human waste, but whatever. Make sure you uh, dispose of waste properly, pack everything back out. You don't leave anything at the campsite. Take a bag with you, put it in your, in your backpack, take all your trash back out with you. The only thing you don't take is what's already here. And I, I do find a lot of kids, they want to take little souvenirs with them when they come. Yeah. So do, leave, leave what you find, and that way other people can enjoy it too. And don't disrupt what you find. There's a place I love to go up in Dolly Solids, it's called Rocky Knob. But the visitors there are so intrigued with building these stone structures called cairns. Right and they have no purpose there. Right. There's a place for care in Spruce, right. but not just because I want to build a pile of rocks. It takes right. away from the natural beauty. Right, exactly. So I hope you, when you get out in nature, you uh, practice these no trace ethics, get out there and enjoy some wildlife, enjoy, enjoy nature and, and have a hike and, and go camping. Oh, marshmallows, <laughs> uh, good thinking. We'll see you next time. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not ready for the fun to be over quite yet. Check this out. Oh, hey! Welcome back to Back to School Talk. I'm Maddie. And I'm Rory and we're a couple of Montegalia County 4-H'ers. And today, we're gonna talk about back to school stuff. Hey Maddie, what are, what are three things that you have in your backpack at the beginning of the year? I have one of my notebooks, my lunchbox, and a binder. What do you have? Oh, I have a lunchbox, a water bottle, and a pencil case. What's your go-to school lunch? Oh, I love um, pepperoni rolls and cookies and cheese sticks. Those are some of my favorites. What are your, some of your favorites? I like to always have a juice box with me. And I also like to have some sort of sub. And I also like to make sure I have water. So what do you talk about at lunch with your friends? What are your best conversation starters? Oh, I like to say, how are you? Did you have a good summer? Um, have you made some new friends? Um, like, some of the classic conversations, like, what's your favorite color, to make sure that I didn't like, forget, you know? And like, um, stuff like that, like, when's your birthday? Um, what's your name? Yeah, stuff like that. What do you like to say? Me and my friends like to tell each other what riddles that we find and stuff. 
We also like if there's someone if I'm if I'm sitting next to new people, I'll ask them like the normal stuff you ask when you meet a new person, like their name, favorite color, favorite hobby. Hmm. Oh, by the way, what's your favorite hobby? Oh, I love making bracelets. I I love what type? Oh, I love seed beads. I love clay beads. I love um, normal bracelets. I love string bracelets. I love all types of bracelets. How about you? I like to ride horses. What's your favorite um, riddle? Okay, so there's one story red house, mm -hmm. a one story yellow house, mm -hmm. a one story blue house. What are the stairs in the green? What color are the stairs in the greenhouse? Oh, that's a hard one. Are they two story? Don't know. Oh, then you never said if the greenhouse had stairs. Mm -hmm. Good job, you got it right. A green person lives in a greenhouse. Mm -hmm. A blue person lives in a blue house. Mm -hmm. A purple person lives in a purple house. An orange person lives in an orange house. What house does a famous person live in? The white house. Maddie, what do you keep in your pencil box? I keep like 10,000 pencils, because I break pencils very easily. I make sure I have enough eraser so my work's not sloppy with just writing over it. Mm -hmm. I make sure I have glue sticks, mm -hmm. scissors, mm -hmm. and a pencil sharpener if the teachers allow it, and that's about it. What do you have? Oh, I have pencil, pencils, maybe um, a pen or two. Um, scissors, glue sticks, erasers, pencil sharpeners. I also have, um, oh, I have a, protract a protractor because um, I was in fourth grade this year and um, I had to use a protractor and that's about it. I also forgot to add that I have highlighters. Oh yeah, same. What's your number one back to school tip? Oh. For some people who might, maybe it's their Maybe they're scared if they're going into a new grade and they don't really know the teachers or if they're going into a new school. Um, I would try to meet one really best friend, like one amazing friend, and then um, ask them who their friends are and get to know a lot of people that way. That's how I learned, and that's how I made some of my really awesome friends. You? My tip is probably, hmm. To be nice to everyone you meet and don't bully people because then they might get mad and bully you and it's not fun to be bullied. Yeah. So always be nice to everyone. Yeah, that's a good one. And that does it for us on Back to School Talk. Thanks for watching. Bye! Bye. Ready for some more WVU Energy Express? We got you covered. Now that you've made puppets, maybe you want some ideas for what to do with them. There are many things you can do with your puppets. For example, you could put on some music and have your puppets dance. You could retell the story that you read in a book. You could tell the story of what you did today. Or you can come up with a new story of your own. And I want to share with you my super secret, super simple story solution formula. Here's how it works. Step one, you have a puppet character and you come up with a problem for that character that needs to be solved. Maybe they have the hiccups. Maybe they can't remember where they put their shoes. Maybe they can't decide what gift to give to their friend for their birthday. Any problem will do. Second, you come up with three solutions to that problem that won't work. And finally, you come up with a solution that will work. Let's see that super secret, super simple story solution in action. And now the story of the pirate with the hiccups. Arr, oh, ho, oh, ho, oh, yo, ho, ho, oh, oh. Arr, I have the hiccups. Oh, arr, oh. I have to make me R's. But I can't make me R's if I have the hiccups. R. What am I gonna do? 
来来来来，二八八八。to have having the hiccups and all of the solutions didn't work until we had a funny ending where another character got the hiccups. There are so many ways to use that formula and I hope you have a lot of fun this summer making puppets and putting on shows. You guys didn't think we'd let you go without a snack. Let's head back over to Molly in the kitchen one last time and see what she's cooking today. Hi, I'm Molly with West Virginia University Extension Family Nutrition Program, and today we're going to make a zucchini summer salad. I've already washed our cooking surfaces and our fresh produce in my hands, so I'm all ready to get started. This recipe is quick and easy and would be party ready for this summer. Our ingredients include a green bell pepper, two zucchini, and one cucumber. Oh, and ranch dressing, I forgot about the best part. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut the ends off our zucchini. This would be a great recipe to use this summer if you have an abundance of zucchini in your garden. And I love this because there's no cooking involved. That's right, we're gonna use raw zucchini. I'm gonna thinly slice this. And now I'm gonna do my pepper. Everybody has their own favorite way to cut a green pepper. 
I like to go around the side. That way you don't disrupt the seeds at all. A lot of people like to go around the top and then pull the seeds out. That works too. And then everything stays intact and just throw that part away. And I know I've heard that if a green pepper has different bumps on the bottom, it means it's a male pepper or a female pepper. One is better for eating and one is better for cooking. I hate to break it to you, but that is an old wives tale. I'm gonna slice my green pepper into strips and then line up all my strips and dice them into smaller pieces. Since this is a pretty big cucumber, I'm going to cut it in half. All we need is a medium sized cucumber. Make a flat surface. Okay, once I've got all my veggies cut up, I'm going to add them to my large bowl. Add in our ranch dressing. For a more intense ranch flavor, you could refrigerate this for one to two hours, but it's gonna be just fine as is as well. The ranch I have is a reduced fat ranch. You could make your own or buy the bottled kind. Give this a good stir. Make sure all the pieces are coated. Okay, I've got this mixed up really well and I'm just gonna put a little bit on the dish. Give it a try. Make sure I get zucchini, cucumber, and pepper. Mmm, that is such a bright, fresh flavor. To view the ingredients and the directions, check out our YouTube page or our website. This would be a great recipe for this summer. Thanks so much for joining me today and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Well, that brings us to the end of another great season of WVU Energy Express. Did you guys have fun this summer? I sure did. I mean, think about all the cool cryptids we learned about and all the tips we learned on how to camp and hike and do it in a way that preserves our beautiful natural environment. Think about all the yummy snacks that Molly showed us how to make. And how about the puppets that would just pop in from time to time? I feel like we're missing one thing though. Oh, wait, I know what it is. Hey, what did uh, one wall say to the other? I'll meet you at the corner. Went to the barber the other day and then when I got home, my kid said, hey dad, did you get a haircut? And I said, no, I, I think they cut them all. I'd tell you a joke about boxing, but I'm worried you'd miss the punchline. Went to a restaurant the other day, and at the end of the meal, the waiter said, you want a box for your leftovers? And I said, no, but I'll wrestle you for them. I always wanted to learn how to play piano by ear, but I found it's easier to use my hands. You guys know why Peter Pan is always flying? He never lands. You ever met a really rude sausage? It's the worst. What do you call a fish with no eyes? Fish. Did you know that King Arthur kept a lamp on his bedside table? Yeah, it's a, a night light. Thank you so much for joining us for this season of WV Energy Express. Hope to see you right back here next year. And until then, have a wonderful rest of your summer.